the exam three question, uh, exam question one, no problem, I know my directions. So we're looking at three unit cells below. Uh, and so let's go ahead and write some information. So this looks and appears to be, this is FCC, so that's a close pack structure. We know that there's four atoms here. We know that this is simple cubic that has one atom, and this is BCC, which is gonna have two atoms. Um, so we need to label directions, what type of unit cell, so we've nailed that, number of nearest neighbors for each, ooh. So we also know it's four atoms, uh, and we also know that this is gonna have 12 nearest neighbors, this is gonna have eight nearest neighbors, this is gonna have six nearest neighbors. So let's go ahead and let's figure out these directions. So here, my ending point is gonna be at uh, basically one, zero, one, minus the origin, so that's my direction here. Uh, you know, I'm gonna kind of uh, draw it essentially like that. Uh, let's go ahead for this guy. So our finishing point is at 0, 1, 0. Our starting point is at uh, 1, 0, 0. So my direction will be for this one. It is going to be 1 hat, um, 1, 0. And uh, we'll go ahead and finish off this last one. So I'm going to say here that my finishing point here is going to be 0, 1 half, 0. And then I'm going to do here, that's going to be minus basically one, one, zero. So we do this, so this is gonna end up being one hat, uh, one hat minus basically a half hat, and then zero. And I'm gonna multiply that out, so two hat, one hat, zero. That's it. So it also says for um, uh, indicate uh, any close pack directions or close pack planes, well we know for FCC that our close pack planes are my one, one. My close pack directions are one, one, zero. For here, for simple cubic, we know that there are no close pack planes, but we have close pack directions. That's going to be one, zero, zero. No close pack planes here, but we do have close pack directions, and that is going to be our fantastic. All right, I'm going to kind of do some erasing here. So let's get into these planes. So again, a little bit of a different um, kind of methodology here. So what are our intercepts? So our intercepts are x-intercept. Actually, we cross the origin here, so we know what we have to do. I have to reset uh, essentially my origin. So I'm going to go right here. So this is going to be my new x. This is going to be my new h. This is going to be my new l. So where do I intersect x? So I intersect x at 1. So at x equals 1 is my intercept. Y equals minus one. And where do I intersect my L here? Never. So it's zero. And now my H equals one over X, Y over HK, one over Y, and my HKL is equal to one over Z. So my coordinates or my plane is going to be one, one hat, zero. That's it. So hopefully it makes sense. So again, we're getting crossed. Our X axis is being crossed there. Our y-axis is getting crossed over there, and that's it, HKL indices. So what about this guy over here? So let's go ahead, again, crossing the origin, so I'm going to have to redo and reset here. So I'm going to choose, this is my origin, so this is my new x, this is my new y, this is my new z. So my x-intercept, where am I crossing x? Never. x is equal to zero, so that's going to be infinity, you know, or basically infinity. My y still at minus 1, and my z now is a half. So my plane is going to be 0, 1 hat, 2, because I'm taking the inverse. There it is. Got it. So 1 is done, 2 is done. I am interested in MGCL2, which can be sometimes doped with KCL. So this is my host, this is my impurity. So I need to write out the Schocke defense and the Frankel defects. So Schocke for my host. So we know those two, vacancy and mg. So we know that's going to be a 2 hat plus vacancy and cl, which is a 1 dot and I have 2. I also have cl, cl, uh, basically x. You can have two of these, those two, basically. cl interstitial, which is going to be minus plus vacancy and cl, which is going to be positive. And I'll have my mg, mg, x, those two. Again, if you have any questions on this, we need to go back to our kind of notes uh, on Kroger Vink notation.
mg minus minus. Good to go. We got it. So uh, those are the Schottky, those are Frankel. Write three extrinsic reactions incorporating KCl into MgCl. So KCl goes into my MgCl2. So let's write one reaction here. So it has to include a cation interstitial and a cation vacancy. So a cation is going to uh, penetrate in here. So K uh, interstitial. So that's going to be a positive one charge and plus a cation vacancy. So I can only create a vacancy in my Mg. So my Mg is going to be minus 2. So I'm going to have to do a 2 here. So I'm going to have to do 2kCl plus 2Cl. Cl. X. Let's do charge balance. Check, check. Mass balance along the X here. So 2Ks, 2Cls. Excellent. What about here, the subscripts? Mg, Cl2. Got it. Yep. Let's do another one. So we nailed the first one. Uh, another water reaction must include a, so let's go ahead, KCl into MgCl2. So must include a cation substitutional. So K is going to substitute for Mg. I'm going from 2 plus to 1 plus, so that's going to be a minus. And an anion vacancy. So an anion vacancy is my Cl, vacancy Cl. That is just going to be here. So mass, I'm charge balanced, good. So K, I need my plus Cl, Cl. What about, okay, good, good. Along the X, what about along the subscripts? Mg, Cl, Cl, got it. Mass balance, charge balance, I'm good to go. Last one, not for this problem, but uh, what about KCl goes into Mg, Cl, too. Uh, so the last reaction must include an anion interstitial. So I need to put Cl interstitial, that's going to be a negative. A substitutional cation. So I need to substitute my cation. So again, KMG. Uh, so K substitutes MG here. And an anion vacancy. So an anion vacancy. So vacancy in Cl. And that's going to be here. And I'm going to have to multiply this by 2. So Cl, K, and then I, oops. So here I'm fine. I'm mass balanced or I'm charge balanced, excuse me. Negative, negative, two positives. So let's go across here, the scripts. Cl, C, uh, K, and vacancy, that's it. All right, what about the subscripts? Mg, Cl2, got it. That's it, I'm done there. And then finally, fill out the phases in the phase diagram and label all the, in, uh, uh, indicate the invariant points. So let's go ahead and let's do this. So this phase is gonna be this plus this. This phase is gonna be this plus this. This phase is going to be this plus this. Uh, this phase is going to be this plus this. This phase is going to be this plus this. This phase is going to be this plus this. This phase is going to be this plus this. And let's go keep going. Whew, liquid. So this plus this is going to be that phase. This phase is going to be this plus this. That phase and this phase is going to be my pure material zinc here plus uh, basically this, this line here. So this plus this. Alright, those are all the phases. Now let's get to our cool invariant points. So we know that for our invariant points, we are going to have to look for two features. This, this, or basically this, this. So again, usually this is like, you know, um, when we're kind of looking at here, it's like a liquid to an alpha plus a beta. That's a eutectic. Uh, an oid would be something like this, where it's like a gamma to an alpha plus a beta. Here, this is a peritectic. If our, we have, we're going basically from like a liquid plus an alpha to like this beta, or you know something like this, or something like a little bit easier to kind of visualize. Like so liquid plus alpha to a beta, or a peritectoid is an alpha plus beta to uh, basically to a gamma. So I'm going to do this as my this symbol is here, this symbol here, this guy. I'm going to do this, and this one I'm going to do a circle. Uh, so I've also got my invariant, or uh, my congruent melting, congruent melting here, right there, and I've got a congruent melting point here, so again, lots of those values. So let me kind of erase this guy here. Oops. I'm going to erase here, and then I'm going to go ahead and write some of these values. Oops. Like this. So let's look at some features here. Well, I see this is a liquid plus a solid goes to there, so that's going to be 
a star right here. So kind of a little bit messy, but you got you can see the kind of value here. This is a solid plus a solid, so that's going to be a circle right here. Um, then that's a you know another little weird point. This is a beta going to a solid going to the other solids. So that's going to be eutectoid. So a triangle here. Where else? Um, I also see a liquid plus a solid going to new solids. So that's going to be another star right there. Anywhere else? I'm looking. Oops, here we go. Solid plus another solid here. This is why it's always nice to kind of draw. And then the liquid going here. So I can see this right, right there. And there might be like a little one here, but again, it's too, it's kind of too tight to see. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that we've got nailed them all. Um, unless I'm missing something, but I think we're good to go. So uh, last question. What path did the crazy person take through the forest? The psychopath. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.